uh, you'll have to forgive me if I talk about the morning rather than the afternoon. And I'll also probably refer more to the UK version and information, but everything I say about the UK, um, I will try and make sure I show the US equivalent because I know some of you will be looking at state standards and following the information and the resources um, that come from the state standards. But because I'm a British teacher, I feel much more comfortable talking about British standards and learning objectives and the national curriculum. So I just wanted to say that as a, as a beginning, really. Um, thank you for coming. Um, thank you for taking this time out of your busy schedules. Um, I enjoy talking to teachers, I enjoy talking to educators, and I enjoy talking to people who want to make a difference to children's learning. Um, as my profile said at the beginning, um, I have worked uh, in this role um, for many years and have spoken with many international schools. And I think everybody's aim is the same, that they want to do the best for the children. But I think in this digital age, where the expectation of life is that everything is digital, we mustn't lose sight of the fact that children, particularly young children, need a practical and hands-on experience in order to benefit most from their learning. So that's why we've chosen to deliver the presentation that we've chosen this morning, um, sorry, this afternoon. Um, and uh, I hope that you'll be able to see what I would encourage you to think about throughout the presentation. There is still four minutes until the start of the presentation. So am I right in assuming you don't want me to start until two o'clock? Uh, it's okay, Miss Margaret, you can uh, start the session. Start now? Yep. Okay, so I will start by sharing my screen. This one, sorry. Here we go. So reading is at the heart of all education. It doesn't matter whether you're five or 55. If you can't read, you can't learn. And I think it's really important that we revise that statement in our own minds. We continue to um, uh, remind ourselves how important reading is. So I'm talking about language. I'm talking about vocabulary. And um, the company I work for, Renaissance, they've been in existence for 35 years. Um, it all started with a, a mother who wanted her son to read. She had four children, three daughters and a son, and the girls read, but the boy didn't. So she started to write quizzes for him. And if he read a book, he could take a quiz. And that got him reading. And other people in the school said, oh, can we have a copy of those quizzes, please? We've got children who aren't reading. And um, Accelerated Reader was born. So Renaissance started its journey. It came to the UK in about 17, 18 years ago, and everything is now mirrored. So we have the national curriculum for um, the UK and the US standards um, for the US. And obviously we're working in a lot of different countries globally now, um, over a hundred countries, with obviously English as a second language being key. Miss Margaret, pardon? Yes. yes. Uh, can you slideshow your slides? Are they not showing? Uh, yes, Miss Margaret. Can you can you see the slides? Uh, yes, we can see the slides, but you're not uh, put it on the slideshow mode. Can you slideshow your PPT? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Um, I, I, I can see my slides. Can you see my slides? Uh, yes, we can see your slides right now, but 
uh, unfortunately, I I think you need to put your uh, to click the slideshow mode uh, because uh, it is small. There's oh, I see. I, I've I've oh okay. Put it on full to... screen, Miss Margaret. It is on full screen. Uh, no, let it's me, not. Oh, let me just uh, let me for me it's on full screen. So let me just stop sharing and I'll start again in case. Um, it's a technical thing. Um, is that now on full screen? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Margaret. Technology is always here to support us, particularly when you are in a public domain where everyone's watching and then it doesn't work and you think, oh dear, never mind. So it's good. Okay, so um, reading is also about conversation. It's about vocabulary, it's about language. So children, particularly those children who need English as a second language, need to hear the language spoken as often as possible. They need an opportunity to share the language in a spoken format. If children can't speak the language, they won't be able to read the language. And so nearly everything that I'm going to talk about today is about ensuring that children are exposed to good quality English language. Teachers, those of you that are teaching, I'm sure you would love to be able to speak to children in English all the time. If you can, do it, because they need to hear the language, they need to understand the language. And from the statistics that were shared at the beginning of the presentation about um, your literacy uh, levels, we need to find ways of ensuring children hear the language more regularly. I've done quite a lot of work uh, in the Seychelles uh, my colleagues often say it can't be work in the Seychelles, it's just a holiday, but um, I have been working with children there in 25 primary schools and the key to their ling language learning has been about talk. It's been about engagement and it's also been about Mayon. Because of Mayon, they have been able to hear the language spoken by a native tongue and it has influenced the way in which they now talk. They're more confident to speak in English because they've heard the language so frequently through Mayon. I also want to think about your schools and what it is that you want to particularly focus on for your schools. What is the reading culture like in your schools? Do children naturally want to read? Do you read to children every day in English or in your own language? They need to see reading happening. They need to understand reading. They need to see that reading is a high profile. And we also need to understand what proficiency in reading is, what makes a good reader, what makes an accomplished reader. And actually all of those um, statements, all of those phrases, all of those words are a definition of reading. They need to be able to ask questions, they need to be able to predict, they need to be able to decide what's important in a piece of text, and they need to be able to check understanding and build their fluency. All of those elements make reading what it is. It's not just about turning the page, it's about understanding the value of reading and recognizing the words within every spoken element of, of the English language. But most of all, they need to enjoy it. It's probably the one aspect of learning that teachers cannot force. And what I mean by force is if you're giving children some writing to do or some number work or some maths, you can see the results. But reading, children could just be looking out of the window. And how would you possibly know whether or not they're reading? So they've got to enjoy it. They've got to um, uh, want to do it. They've got to want to turn that page. The English alphabetic code is arguably one of the most complex in the world. 
there are 44 sounds that are only represented by 26 letters in the alphabet. But there are over 150 ways in which those sounds are represented in the spoken word. And we call those graphemes. And in Finland, which is arguably the most complicated language uh, to learn, there are 42 sounds and 42 letters. So in some ways it's easier. I thought I'd give this example. When children are first starting to learn to read, that's what they see. Now, I, I, and so I thought I'd show you something, unless there's anybody that can speak Chinese, that means nothing to you. It's just shapes. It's just hieroglyphics on a page. You might recognize one word because it's your name or it's a word you've seen very often before. That is what it's like for children to learn to read in their own language. It's challenging. But once they can read in their own language, the brain is so clever, it's so um, sophisticated. Even though these words have all been jumbled up, if you have a good understanding of English language, you should still be able to read that first sentence. I couldn't believe that I could only, that I could actually understand what I was reading. And that's because the first letter and the last letter are in evidence. So reading is very complex. If you then add into that a child who's learning English as a second language, it becomes much more complicated because they're not listening to that language being spoken. So we need to put in other ways of helping them. I thought I'd share with this, this with you. This is um, the layers at which children learn English as a second language or they learn a second language. So initially at the A pre A1 level, they can recognize familiar words, but they need pictures and they need familiar vocabulary right up to where they're able to read articles in B2 and they can understand viewpoints and attitudes. That's the range of skills that children need to have in order to be able to learn a second language, to read a second language, to speak a second language. And if we look at the vocabulary necessary in order to understand a second language, you would think, wouldn't you, that 80% would be enough. But I just thought I'd show you that actually the complexity of learning a second language means that if we look at this, set, this paragraph here, 80% coverage in a thousand words means there's a significant number of words missing, which makes it complicated for children to understand. So all of those X's are missing vocabulary. And I'm saying this not to make it feel like it's an in, impossible task. I want to reaffirm and um, underline some of the complexities that children need to go through, which is why we need to speak to them in English all of the time or give them access to English as often as we possibly can. We also need to be careful of gender stereotyping. And what I mean by that is we mustn't assume that a girl just wants pink. I, I was um, very uh, cavalier and I put into Google pink, I put into Google books for girls and this is what came up, all pink and fluffy. And I put into Google books for boys and it's blue and it's brainy books and it's dangerous books. And it's very, very stereotyping, very gender specific. Boys and girls should be given choice of both types of books. They need to make their own decisions. And if they're owning the books they're reading, they're going to enjoy them. I love this image because it shows exactly what reading is about. Reading should not be so smooth and straightforward that it becomes very boring. It needs to have a few bumps in the road just to give enough challenge to engage people, engage in, adults alike. However, if it's so complicated, shown by the staircase here, people will give up because it's just frustrating. We've done a lot of research in Renaissance around reading 
and where the best examples of the most effective results are. And reading time is very important. Children, you can see on this graph here that the optimum time for children reading is between 15 and 44 minutes every day. They need to have access to reading material every day. If you can only manage 15 minutes, fantastic. But don't assume that that's going to happen at home. People live very busy lives and it won't happen at home. At home, reading at home should be a bonus. Timetables should reflect a 15 minute slot every day to ensure children are engaged with reading material. And with our Accelerated Reader program, which is also linked with MyOn, we have also realized that children who are successful in their quizzing and get between 85 and 95% correct in their quizzing are demonstrating that they are understanding what they're reading. We don't want them to have 100% because if it's 100%, it might be too easy for them and they need to be challenged. So the research that was done with over 2 million children in 2011 gave us this data, gave us this information. So we feel very confident in being able to ensure that you, using our, technology, using our um, resources and your technology, can make it fair for children. This is a very famous picture, which I'm sure many of you will have seen. And what it, sees, what it says there is that a goldfish can do the same as an elephant. They could be five or six, seven different children in your class. They all have different needs. They all have different backgrounds. They've all had different experiences. And you cannot apply the same expectation on every child. And that's what Einstein meant when he said, if you judge everybody by a goldfish, you're actually not giving anybody, you're not doing the same, um, you're not giving everybody the same access. We also have um, our STAR reading test, which is what benchmarks children and gives children the opportunity to make sure that they're reading within the right range. We call it a ZPD. Some of you might know it as Lexile. And the way that the test works is that children start with a simple question. And if they get that question right, the next one will be a little bit harder. If they get the next one wrong, the next one will be a bit easier. And over 34 questions, the test changes direction. Harder, easier, harder, easier. Until at the end, we are able to say that these children are reading at this level. And you can see the grey um, rectangle at the back. That's the error of measurement. And you can see at the beginning, as the test starts, we have to establish a benchmark. And it's not until we get to the 34th question that we can see that that error of measurement has reduced significantly. And we give children a range based on that STAR test. Not too easy, not too hard. And it is a range. We're not saying you have to read at this level. We're giving you a range. And that is also linked into Myon. This reading rope, I've added it into the, the, the presentation. The presentation will be made available to you at the end as a PDF. So you will have this information to remind you about some of the things that I've spoken about. I know that it's also being recorded. And so you will probably um, receive a recording of the presentation as well. But this is uh, also a very famous uh, image, which I think reflects the Renaissance solution, making sure that the word recognition, language comprehension, and the testing of all of that is woven together to give a balanced offering to children as they go on their reading journey. So I'm just going to move on. I said that one. So um, what I'd like to do now is to show you the arbookfind.com.co.uk. So I'm just going to stop sharing. I'm actually going to go live to the website. Um, so if you just bear with me for one moment. And I'm just going to share my screen of the AR Book Find.
Can you see that? Yes. Can you see yes. it? Yes, you can. Good. Thank you. I'm showing the .com version, but there is a .co.uk .co, sorry, .co.uk version. Um, and this site is often overlooked. It's a freely available website. So even if you aren't customers of um, Miranda or Renaissance, you have access to this site. And it's a great place to find books. Although it's all of the books that we have quizzed, it's also a freely available website for searching books on different topics. So if I was to put a title like Elephants, into the search engine and search it. It's telling me that there are 413 books about elephants on this website. Well, even if you're not a customer, those books might be new to you. Why would you not use this website to help you? If I want to um, refine that search, I can say, well, I only want nonfiction. So now I'm down to 248. And actually, I only want to have the middle grade. So I want children who are sort of nine or 10. And I'm down to 84 books. And notice that um, you can actually immediately click on the buy from Amazon and you can buy the book. And I'm not on commission. I'm not, no, I have nothing to do with Amazon, but this is just making it easier for you to get hold of these books. So please use this website. You know, it really is a very, very helpful website. The other thing I wanted to show you, because I will um, talk about this in a, little, in a little while, is that we have four different quiz types. And the one I just want to, to talk to you about is the recorded voice quizzes. So if you are using um, Accelerated Reader, if I click on recorded voice, those are the quizzes that have got a narration over them. They're spoken for the children. And you'll see that we've got nearly 1,500, I'm sorry, 15,000 uh, recorded voice quizzes. So, you know, this website has got lots of information. So please do use it. Um, I'm seeing that people are responding to the chat. Thank you for answering the questions. Um, if there are, I, I'm happy to, if there's any questions so far, I know we said we'd stop halfway, but if, if I've said anything so far that anyone would like to ask a question, please put that into chat. And if I need to respond to that, I'm very happy to do so. So I'm going to go back to my presentation. So this is the information that you get from um, uh, AR Book Find. Um, and uh, you can see how much information there is in there. So what I'm going to do now is actually go into Myon. So um, you can see that the split for Myon is between 70% and 30%. And um, there is more nonfiction than fiction. But I think that's a good thing. I think that fiction often is um, uh, needed as a storytelling with books. But with Myon, you've got the opportunity to share books, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, model for children how Myon works. Now, um, my colleagues at the beginning showed you a little bit of information around Myon. So um, I'm hoping that. Uh, uh, you've got a good understanding of what it offers. What I'm going to do now is go live into the Myon website and show you some of the things that you can do with Myon as a teacher, as an educator, as a, an adult supporting children in the classroom. Now, this could be as a whole class. It could be small groups. It could be with individual children. It's up to you how you choose to use Myon, but I want to emphasize that this is a fantastic teaching tool. It's not just a digital library. It's not just for children to read at home. They can read at home. And as um, somebody said at the beginning, 24 seven access, they can download the books onto apps. But as a teaching tool, it offers children the opportunity to see how to navigate through a book, 
to understand the value of language, vocabulary, engagement, information. So let's go to our Myon website. And I'm assuming there are no questions. And if there are, then, you know, someone perhaps will say, Margaret, you need to answer a question. Um, so let's go to Myon. I'm going to go straight to the library and I'm going to search and I'm going to search for elephants. And you can see there's a whole range of books on elephants. I'm going to choose this book. And start the book. What I'm um, going to do is to turn off the audio but you can um, trust me when I say that this book is being narrated so it will be spoken in English by a native speaker so the children will hear the book being read to them. I hope you'll agree with me it's a very um, appealing interface it's um, beautifully illustrated it's got um, very simple language. This book I like particularly because it's actually written as a fiction book, although it's non-fiction. And obviously the children can read this book. They can read it with somebody at home. They could read it with somebody in the classroom. But as a teacher, you have the opportunity to really focus on this book. And that's through the tools that are available. So let's have a look at some of those tools. So yes, you may be reading the, the book to the children, but actually you may want to encourage them to look at the picture. What's the relationship between the mother and the baby? What are the words that describe the relationship between the mother and the baby? What you're doing is focusing the children's attention on the images and the pictures, but you're still talking in English. You're still asking them for words. It might be kind, it might be loving. They will have an understanding of that relationship because hopefully they can see that it's the same sort of relationship that they have with their, the adults in their family. So what you're doing is building on their own first-hand experience. You're not just expecting them to jump into Africa and understand what it's like in Africa. What you're doing is starting from a starting place which they will feel comfortable with, they will have an understanding with, and you're using the Myon interface to do that. You can also focus with things like an arrow. You know, what's this called? It's a trunk. Shall we look that word up? So if we go to the next page, we might want to look up a word in the dictionary. So I'm going to look up the word walk. And here on the dictionary is the word walk. But I also know that the word prehensile, whoops. Hello. Yeah, me? Yeah. Is also very similar. It's also um, uh, part of an elephant's trunk. So prehensile describes the trunk adapted so that it can grasp by wrapping around something. So that's describing a trunk. So even though the word isn't appearing, the dictionary is supporting language. That dictionary is so powerful. And you could use the dictionary to encourage children to use an English dictionary. Talk about a dictionary, the way it works, which words are there, the definitions. Thesaurus, a thesaurus is a great way of children developing their language. So let's think of the word kind when we were thinking about the relationship between the mother and the baby. Let's find another word for kind in the thesaurus. We might have some thesauruses in the classroom. That would be such a good investment because you're developing the children's language. 
And you can see as we work our way through the book, this is talking about life as an elephant. And that empathy that children need, that literacy capital, the, the phrase that's very um, common in the UK at the moment in um, children's learning is cultural capital. If children don't have cultural capital, they will find it challenging to read because they can't bring with them experience. They can't bring with them the understanding of the world around them. So obviously, if someone's been to Africa and they've seen an elephant, they will understand this book so much more. But most children won't have been to Africa and won't have seen an elephant um, in Africa. They may have seen an elephant. So we as educators need to help that. We need to enable that. And that's what literacy capital is. That's what cultural capital is. How much experience have they had with books, with language, with vocabulary? Now, the other thing that Mayon does really nicely, and again, a great opportunity for you to demonstrate, is offer a platform for writing. If children's reading is good, their writing will be good. And if they, their speaking is effective, then that all builds into that. So within Myon, there is a writing journal. And the journal is a support for writing through the um, reading of a book. Let me just demonstrate for you. So I want to put in here, um, elephants. And this journal will follow the person who's logged in with every book they read. So I might allocate five books to children all about elephants. And I want them to find five facts about habitat. So actually, I'm going to change this to habitat. And what I'm going to do is ask um, the children to find me these five facts by using the Myon interface. So they would log in as a student. And I'm going to take this information here, which is all about their water hole. So yes, that's about their habitat. They need watering holes. And you can see it's copied it into that journal. It's even put the citation there. So we can even find out from which book it, it's come from. So what I might do is take out some of the detail, but just record which book it was that I got it from. Now, if a child reads three or four or five books and records five facts from those books, we could then just, again, as a teacher, copy all of that put it into a Word document, and then I could ask children to write something in their own words. Can you write three sentences based on that information using your own words, not just copying straight from the book? That is sophisticated, but if you break it down into those steps, it's actually quite simple. You need to model it for children. You need for them to see what you're talking about when you say take notes and then put it into your own words. But this is such a good scaffolding opportunity. And Myon is a great platform for that. It enables teachers and um, educators to support children's journey in reading and writing and in language acquisition. And um, I don't know if there are any questions about what I've just shown. It seems like an obvious um, uh, opportunity to, to ask for those um, questions, if anyone would like to ask. Someone's asking about the myon.com. Um, you will need an account, as, as Bernard has said here, you know, it's not a freely available platform. So uh, you can get in touch with Miranda and they will uh, talk to you about how you can access Myon. I'm showing you the interface to give you a flavour of how Myon is, uh, works and how it can work in your schools, in your classroom. But then the beauty of it is that it is also available at home for the children so they can share with their family. They can share with a brother or a sister or an aunt or an uncle or a granny or anybody who wants to be um, read to. 
Okay, Susie, I'm glad that that helps. Um, yeah, is there more questions, teachers? Because uh, it's now now it's time for the first Q and A session with Miss Margaret. So if you have any question or you want to deliver ideas to us, please type it on the chat box or you can use the raise hand feature. Okay. okay, I think uh, someone sent a question privately to me, Miss Margaret. Yes, that's yeah. fine. Uh, but I think we can, uh, please, Mr. Rufairah Latif, to ask first to you. Oh, sorry, Miss Rufairah. Yeah, okay. Please unmute yourself. Okay, hi. thank you so much for the change that even to me. Yeah, hi. Yeah, uh, I'm really grateful that uh, we have the kind of information that we get from you. It's really good actually because from now on, I am actually in the chair for, for grade four. And you know, the student in the grade four actually have very much, I don't know how to explain them. They really, really have a lot of things to, to you know, to to learn about from the books but sometimes you are saying that before to me before to us that actually when we uh read that book and then they can make their own words you know kind of like uh they're writing that and then they, they have their own way to explain that and they, that's actually what I, I want to ask you how we can improve that they so they can be you know like having their own way to provide how they want to say how they want how they want to make another way uh you know from that story that they read because sometimes they read that they get the point but they don't know how to explain it for, from especially yeah for us for the second language you know english not uh, our first language, first language. That's why, yeah i you know that's what i mean thank you so much yes i, I understand so um when i was teaching um my last class were seven and eight year olds and obviously English was their first language but I think what I did with them will also be useful for you and what I would um, suggest you do is you buy an easel with a big sheet of white paper mm -hmm. and a big pen and you show children how to start and you write it so um, in the dark, deep jungle, but you encourage children to contribute to that sentence. What other, what other word can we talk about in the jungle? Mm -hmm. Lots of trees, lots of birds, lots of noises. And you write, as they give you the word, you write it down and you repeat it and you write it again. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're breaking down the sentence into in, in, into words mm -hmm. so once they've got three or four words you can then build the sentence mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. i i have done a lot of work um with chinese schools and they ask exactly the same questions so it's exactly the same wherever in the world you are trying to teach children english yeah. because they are they are necessarily competent in their own language they haven't had the opportunity to take on the second language. And you as the teacher will have a very challenging mountain to climb. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. so you should make it, if you imagine that mountain, think of it having ledges as you go up the mountain. Don't try and be a mountain goat and climb right to the very top very quickly. <laughs> you need to keep stopping, looking back, thinking about the next stage one step at a yeah. time because yeah, exactly. if you rush the children they will get bored and they will also be frustrated yeah. because they'll That's want to do it but you're yeah. exp so sometimes i get asked the question oh can you show harder books no your seven-year-old has the reading ability of a four-year-old maybe or even a three-year-old so mm -hmm. don't give them Harry Potter. They can't manage Harry Potter when they're 10, when they have English as a second language, because they don't have the language. They don't have the vocabulary. 
So I think it's remembering those things. And I, I know you are an educated person, you know this information, but sometimes we forget because the pressure is on us to deliver. And so we try to go too fast and we leave people behind. So my, my recommendation is steady and slow. Um, we, uh, we, we went on holiday with my grandson this year and my husband had him in a backpack and they were going up a hill and he kept saying steady and slow, steady and slow. And my grandson was going steady, slow, steady, slow. I think remember that, remember that image of going up a hill, steady and slow, because otherwise you will fail. And it's a shame if you fail because you want to do the right thing. And I don't think people understand how complex learning English is. Very much, yeah. Yeah, I get it. Thank you so much. I think like, uh, you mean like we have to like take a baby step. Don't take it, don't push it too much to them because it's going to be like make English something boring that they will give up on it. On exactly. The, the, yeah. Exactly. They have to enjoy it. Yeah. They have to enjoy it. You know, if you have Mayon in your classroom um, or anything that you can read to children, mm -hmm. just keep reading. Get some poetry books. Mm -hmm. Have some material that is simple. And every now and then just stop the class and read them a poem. Yeah. They'll love it. Yeah. You know, poetry is such an easy access point because it's short bursts. Mm -hmm. And there are some very simple poems around. That's that's a very good thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for that information. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Freira, for your questions. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, we got another question, Miss Margaret. Yes. So, yeah, I will read it. We have been using printed textbooks in our classroom. When we return to a face-to-face -face classroom, Pedagogically speaking, how to best combine the use of our printed English textbooks and the My Own program? So there will be alignment between the use of printed textbooks and My Own. That's a that's a great question because I actually do believe that um, no digital platform, and I think My Own is pretty good. I know they pay my salary, so I'm going to say that, but I do believe it is a very, very good platform. Um, but I don't think that children should not be holding a book ever again. I don't think it's a replacement for, it's an enhancement of, and it's an enhancement of the experience of reading. So yes, they absolutely should still have the book in their hands, but you don't have to have the same books. You don't have to have the digital version as a printed version. I think have both, have different books, because the ones that you have in your school are the ones that you have chosen to support your curriculum. You may not find them on my own. It doesn't matter. The concept is still the same. The books that the children are reading on my own are books that are on my own. The books that you are reading in school are the books that you're reading in school. But both offer access to vocabulary, language, learning journey, experience, understanding, knowledge, facts, all of those elements are in the printed version and the digital version. If you have both, I think what you're doing is giving children access to a much wider range of books. You aren't dependent on children having books at home. But as a teacher and educator, you have the opportunity to model for children how a printed book works. It's for, you can't just hold a book up. Well, you can, but it's quite hard to hold a book up in your hand and you have 30 children in your class all trying to see the book at the same time. That's impossible. That's boring. The children at the back are always the children at the back and they will find any excuse they can not to engage with you at the front. So holding a book up, you're almost giving them an invitation to say, oh, that's not for me, I'm not interested. However, if it's on a screen and everybody can see it, you're still reading to children, you're still engaging with them, you're still giving them access to good material. I don't know if that answers the question for the person who asked it. Okay, right. So thank you so much, Miss Margaret, for your explanation. Um, yeah, 
I think this is the last question for our first Q&A session. Uh -huh. uh, is there a quiz or some exam in my own application when they have read it? So yes, um, my own is linked to Accelerated Reader. Um, what I'm not entirely sure is how um, that presents within um, your offering, Miranda, in that you um, offer by way of a platform. But all of the books in my own have a quiz, which enables um, children to test their understanding of the book. Um, so the star test sets the children's level. The, you know, the graph I showed you where it built up. That's a test that children sit in order to get the level. Um, but the quiz is an opportunity for children to answer questions on the book to enable them to understand whether they've understood the book. And they do enjoy doing accelerated reader quizzes. I don't know if I need to explain accelerated reader a little bit. I don't know, um, Miranda, maybe you. Do we want to give some more information about accelerated reader? I'm not sure. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, thank you so much, Miss Margaret, for your uh, explanation and for the first session. Uh, educators, before we continue to the next session, you may want to relax for a short while. Allow us to play a video from CEO and founder of Muntari Group, Ibu Anna Rimbapoa, to quickly update you on the latest Muntari Group's breakthrough initiative to support reading literacy in Indonesia. Halo Bapak Ibu Guru yang saya hormati, saya Ana Rimba Pua, founder dan CEO Mentari Group. Saya ingin mengajak Bapak Ibu sekalian untuk berkenalan dengan satu buku yang sangat istimewa yang baru selesai diterbitkan oleh Akta Ilmu Sukses Mentari Group. Kenapa spesial? Karena buku ini ditulis oleh 16 anak Indonesia usia muda rata-rata 9 sampai 12 tahun seusai mengikuti kelas menulis cerita. Buku ini kita beri judul, Bagaimana Kalau 16 Anak Indonesia Menulis Cerita? Mengapa kita ingin menerbitkan buku ini, Bapak-Ibu sekalian? Ada tiga alasan. Pertama, karena kita ingin mengapresiasi karya dari anak-anak. Kita ingin memberikan wadah supaya kreativitas anak dan bakat anak-anak bisa bertumbuh. Ibaratnya mereka adalah tunas-tunas muda yang nanti akan bertumbuh menjadi bunga atau buah yang manis. Kita akan dukung dan berikan perhatian supaya janganlah sampai mereka menjadi bunga yang layu sebelum berkembang. Kedua, kita juga ingin membantu menumbuhkan minat baca anak. Dengan mendesain suatu buku yang isinya secara khusus bisa memancing anak-anak untuk ikut membaca, itu tujuan dari menulis menyusun buku ini. Jadi di dalam buku bagaimana kalau kita buat sedikit rupa supaya anak-anak terpancing untuk membaca. Dan kita ketahui apabila minat membaca anak sudah tumbuh, anak yang senang membaca akan mempunyai kecerdasan yang lebih tinggi, konsentrasi yang lebih baik, fokus, dan tidak heran kalau anak-anak yang minat membacanya baik akan berprestasi secara akademik. Ketiga, kita juga berharap anak-anak yang membaca buku ini juga nanti terpancing, termotivasi untuk ikut menulis buku. Sehingga keseluruhan kita akan punya generasi muda, anak-anak yang senang membaca, dan juga senang menulis. Mari kita dukung bersama Bapak Ibu program ini supaya bisa terjadi generasi muda Indonesia yang punya minat baca tinggi dan juga pandai menulis. Ayo kita lihat isi bukunya. Buku ini memang seperti saya sampaikan tadi, kita buat menarik gitu ya. Dengan ilustrasi yang menggelitik dan juga dibuat oleh anak-anak juga. Unik, menggelitik, ngegemesin, isi ceritanya juga judulnya lucu-lucu, kelinci dan bulan, spageti bertemu hujan, dunia monster. Bagaimana kalau bayangan tidak mengikutiku? What if the chicken become extinct? Bye-bye chicken. Jadi ini ada bahasa Indonesia, ada bahasa Inggris. Karena otentik, kita tidak terjemahkan apa adanya yang anak-anak tulis. Kita juga buat, ini sesuai dengan cerita anaknya, ada yang pendek satu halaman, ada yang dua halaman, maksimum tiga halaman. Sengaja ini, karena kalau mau menumbuhkan minat baca, kita nggak bo boleh langsung kasih panjang-panjang ya. Ibaratnya kita berikan snack. 
praktek membaca. Jadi baca dulu yang pendek. Kalau yang pendek senang seru. Ah mau baca lagi ah yang agak panjang. Eh tidak sadar apa bacanya udah panjang. Jadi udah mulai tumbuh deh senang bacanya. Kurang lebih seperti itu. Ilustrasinya juga unik ya. Sehingga kita harapkan anak-anak menjadi senang membaca. Baiklah Bapak Ibu sekalian, ayo kita dukung. Bagaimana cara mendukungnya? Ya Bapak Ibu bisa memesan, kemudian membacanya. Dan juga rekomendasikan ke anak Bapak Ibu sekalian atau murid-murid Bapak Ibu di sekolah. Supaya mereka juga memiliki buku ini, kemudian membacanya. Dan yang penting setelah membaca, mereka bisa coba-coba menulis. gitu Dan kirim ceritanya ke mentari grup. Siapa tahu terseleksi untuk diterbitkan menjadi cerita. Karena kita punya cita-cita, buku ini akan berseri-seri, Bapak-Ibu. Dan siapa tahu murid Bapak-Ibu bisa menjadi salah satu penulis buku berseri berikutnya. Dan berita baiknya, semua keuntungan penjualan buku ini kita akan sumbangkan untuk pengembangan literasi anak-anak Indonesia. Demikian, Bapak-Ibu sekalian. Salam literasi dari saya. Terima kasih. Thank you, Ibu Ana Rimba, for the video. We will now proceed to the second session, and I'm sure that the educators wants to know about the practice in excellent reader. And Miss Margaret, the time is yours. So, um, accelerated reader is part of my own. Um, and has a function to play because it, it is an enhancement of Myon. So um, I think if you are interested in Myon and Accelerated Reader and STAR, I'm sure if you contact Mentari, they will be very happy to give you the, um, the details. What I'd like to do now is to continue my presentation, but talking a little bit about um, our focus skills. Now, again, I always like to share things that are free because I know teachers love free things, particularly if they are going to help their children with their learning. Before I do that, just a very quick recap um, on, on Myon, and that's just to say that um, you will be getting this as a PDF, so this is just recognizing the, the elements of, um, of Myon and, and what it does, and, and uh, the fact that it's linked to UK and US curriculum. Um, the reports, so you get reports that tell, tell you how many books children have read, how many pages they've read, how much time they've spent reading. So that's all part of the back office of Myon. So um, you have that information. Lots of different categories to choose from. So different topics that can be searched. But now what I'd like to do um, is talk about focus skills. So um, during the uh, lockdown, we recognized that we had some information, both in the UK and the US, which teachers might find quite helpful. Um, and they are what we call our key focus skills. So this is the website, which you'll also get um, uh, a copy of. The I'll make sure that you get the... Uh, dot com version as well. But let me break this down for you a little bit. So we worked with the um, National Federation for Educational Research um, and quite a big body, a very big body in uh, the UK. And we employed them to look at our documentation around assessment. And they were very impressed with it. And they said that the detail that we had put into the wording of our assessment was stronger than the national curriculum. And that often the national curriculum made some assumptions about children's learning journey. But what we had were very little steps that teachers could look at to see how they could inform their planning, how they could develop their children's learning. And we actually did it for mathematics and for reading. I'm just going to focus on the reading because that's what we're talking about today. But both are freely available as a download from 
the .com site and the .co.uk site. We will make those websites available to you and I'll show you them at the, um, after this little bit of my presentation. And what they said was that um, they were like building blocks. So the focus skills, the bits that were really important were like building blocks. So there were all of the steps that we identify in our assessments, in our STAR assessment, in our learning progressions, in the learning journey for maths and reading. But there were some key elements which stood out and they became what we now call focus skills or building blocks, whichever you prefer. And here's an example. So in year five, so I'm talking about the English curriculum now, year five, the children are um, nine and 10. And in maths, for example, it's really important that they understand place value. Place value is thousands, hundreds, tens and units. So do they know in the number 2,450, which number represents the four, the, the hundreds? And in 2,450, it's the four. They absolutely need to know that information to learn maths, to know number. But one of the um, objectives in the national curriculum is that children should know about Roman numerals. And that's based on our hist history. It's not a critical skill. If they don't learn it, it probably won't matter. It's a nice to have. So the difference between this skill and this skill is best demonstrated by this image. So these are all of the learning progressions. They're all the objectives. They represent all of the objectives that children need to learn in order to be proficient in reading or maths. So this is a, a diagram. And we can see that A is a really important skill because it influences C, H, D, E, and B. So in order to learn B, E, D, H, and C, they need to know A. So A is a key skill. It's a key building block. It's a focus skill. Whereas C on its own, is really not much good at all for anything else. So it's not a focus skill. It might be the Roman numeral objective, which is a nice to have, but actually it doesn't influence the learning of any other objective. So these are the focus skills for reading. And you can see I'm showing you the English, the UK version. Uh, you will have access to the US version as well. And you can see from reception, so children four and five, up to the age of um, 15 and 16, they are all of the um, building blocks, all of the focus skills, the key learning objectives for these different topics, engaging and responding to texts, understanding and interpreting texts, discussion skills, fluency and accuracy, phonic knowledge and skills. And you can see here how they are mapped out. So obviously phonics, which is how children learn to build words, so their decoding skills, is most um, taught in those early years. Now, of course, for you, where you're teaching English as a second language, these skills may actually go right up to year six. You may need to use these learning objectives in the higher. So the teacher who I spoke to just now, who I was explaining to how to build slowly, you might need to adapt this information because you're teaching your children English as a second language. You're not teaching them the fundamentals of reading. You're teaching them the fundamentals of reading through a second language platform. So you might need to adapt the years. But what you get with the document that you'll be able to download for free are the focus skills. So you can see there are 
over 1200 skills for reading, 29% of them are focus skills. If you know what those focus skills are, you will be able to use them in your teaching for your children. And we can see by color where the different focus skills appear. And you can see this dark purple, which we talked about just now. You can see in year two um, in the UK curriculum where the children are seven, there's a lot of learning to go on because the children move into a different key stage. So key stage one in the UK is reception year one and year two. They then move into key stage two, year three, year four, year five, year six. There's a lot of learning that goes on in year three because they've got to adapt to a slightly more formal environment. And then a lot of learning going on in year six before they go to secondary school. And you can see in secondary school that year seven, eight and nine, it's not that they're learning, not learning anything, but often it's a consolidation. It's a deeper dive into the learning that's gone on in primary school. So seven, eight and nine, sometimes primary school teachers get very cross because secondary teachers say, oh, we just repeat what you do in primary. Well, if you repeat what we do in primary, you're not doing the children any favours. That'll be boring. They've learnt it. What you need to do is revisit it, but dig deeper and make sure it's very strong and solid as a foundation before they move on to year 10, where they will be sitting exams in year 11. So year 10 and 11 in secondary is where children sit exams in, in the UK. And this is the sort of information that you get in the document, which is a free download. Where, what the, um, the focus skill is, what it means, and what the children need to learn in order to achieve it. There is a lot of reading. Um, if you do decide to um, register for this, as I say, it's a free, free um, registration, don't print it out. Do not print it out because it's a lot of pages, a lot of colour and a lot of ink. So only print out what you want. If you press print, you will be very unpopular in your school or at home because you'll use all your ink up. So just be careful if you decide to print it out. It's a very good document and you might want to print it, but just be aware it's quite thick and a lot of ink will be used up. So just choose the year group that you're interested in. So the teacher I spoke to earlier, she said she was teaching year four. She might want to print out year one and year two because that will help her get a better understanding for the language learning for her year four children. I wouldn't recommend printing out the whole document unless you're a leader in the school and you want to have an overview of the whole thing. And it just shows you the focus skills where most of the learning goes on. And you can see that, you know, in some year groups, it's much meatier. There's much more to learn than in others. But as a collection, the whole journey is important. And if children have missed out early on, then obviously it's going to affect the way in which they learn as they move on, which is why it's so important to emphasize English as second learners will need a slower, much shorter, a uh, much uh, younger approach. Uh, and here's another example of for year six, um, where it, it fits in. And this is the reading and the maths. I just put it in to show you just uh, there's a similar, uh, we have similar documents for maths. And you'll see that, you know, still in year six, reading and maths, look how much more they need to learn. And in year 10 and 11, and year two, year three, same story. So I don't know if there's any questions about the focus skills that anybody would like to ask um, before I just uh, come to the last parts of my slides, actually. We allowed a lot for questions, but there haven't been so many. Yeah. Is there any question about the focus skills? Yes, Mr. Ariski. Yeah, you can unmute yourself. All right.
right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Margaret and Miranda, for the time. Uh, I, I'd like to ask about this focus skills. This is going to be interesting for us to, to apply in the class. But I wonder what kind of methods or techniques that we can use in the, in the class, especially this is the kind of pandemic. So we should, uh, we should teach them online. Uh, what kind of methods or techniques that we can use for these focus skills in the class, Ms. Margaret? So that um, from Renaissance, it would be star reading and star maths, which um, is a test that um, uh, levels the children's understanding. Um, so it would depend on your children's reading ability, whether the star maths um, is uh, relevant uh, for you, but it does test children's maths understanding. But of course, their English will be tested um, in a slightly different way. Um, for the star reading um, is um, uh, based on the children's comprehension. So uh, children are tested on their understanding of what is being written um, in the paragraph and they're asked to answer a question based on their understanding of that reading. Now we do also have um, STAR Early Literacy, which is a decoding testing. So it's a, a, a children's understanding of decoding. So the, the very early stages of reading. And I did use that very successfully um, in the Seychelles where English was very much a second language. I would think it probably reflects very similar to your children because French Creole is very dominant in the Seychelles. They don't speak English at home and in school they only have an hour a, a, a week sometimes. So I think, you know, it's a very poor acquisition of English. Even though the country's menus and all of their signs are all in English, the children's acquisition of language, English language is, is poor. And they um, used star early literacy and star reading as a way of um, understanding the children's understanding of English language, if that makes sense. So it's kind of um, placement test, placement test. Uh, what sort of like test? That. Placement test. It's, it's a test where children log in and they it adapts according to how they answer. A style literacy is headphones and um, visual. So they're asked to pick a picture or a letter. Um, it's very simple, but it also adapts. It also adapts. Thank you so much, Miss Margaret. You're welcome. Somebody else has raised their hand. Yeah, Mr. Reno. Hello, Miss Margaret and Miss Mary. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, sorry. Good morning. I mean. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sorry if I miss something. Um, my own offer students a lot of interesting books, right, to read, based on their level. So when they uh, come to my own, so they have like a pre-test or what we call it level test to measure their skills. So the the application can give can recommend uh, appropriate books for them, right? And yes. also after they read some books or a book, there will be like a quiz. Yes. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, like to, to, to measure them so the application can put them into the highest level or stay at the same level. Um, so, yes. So suppose that I have 20 students with a, with a very different levels, like variety levels, okay? And I'm a little bit uh, confused. How do we measure, how do we make like assessment? Uh, I mean, they are in very, they are in different levels, right? Of course, they do quiz based on their level. Yes. And how do I to do like uh, my, my own assessment for their, uh, what we call it they are reading like, comprehension they're like reading comprehension because they are they are in different level right so if i make my own questions of course i don't know because they, they are in different levels so what do you think about that 
Thank you, Ms. Margaret. So that's where STAR assessment comes in. So they, when they first take a STAR test, the very first time, um, it starts at 18 months below their chronological age. So let's assume you have children who are eight years old. And let's assume that we're not talking about English now, we're just, let's, or, or pretend you are in England, okay? So you're in England, you're teaching children who are eight years old. When they sit the STAR test for the first time, it will start at the age of six and a half. So that it's very easy for them. And it will ask them a question, so their confidence grows. And if they get that one right, you know the graph that I showed um, uh, in, the, in the PowerPoint, um, let me just uh, show it again and I can, I can explain it as it's um, demonstrating on, on, the, um, on the screen. So, uh, oh, sorry. So this, um, let me just find it here. So the children start with that question. And let's imagine that this child is eight and they're starting. This is a, a question suitable for a six and a half year old. And it's always easy because we want them to, you know, it's a one and a half years younger than their age. They get it right. They don't know that they get it right. Oh, sorry, I don't know why my computer's doing what it's doing. They don't know that they've got it right or wrong. It's not that sort of test. They're not, they're not told, oh, well done, you've got it right, or oh dear, you got it wrong. The, the, um, the test adapts. It's computer adaptive technology. Um, and so um, it's called, if you are interested, you can look it up. Um, it's called item response theory. And item response theory is not about questions. It's about understanding around the question. And if the children can understand around the question, then their understanding is much deeper than right or wrong. And so the questions are worded to test the item response theory. And so in this particular case, this child gets the next question wrong. And so the test adapts and makes the next one easier. And it keeps doing it all the way along until 34. And that little um, oblong that's at the back there, you can see it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller because the research that we've done around item response theory has shown us that once we get to a certain stage, that is the level at which the child is operating. Now, the complexity for you in Indonesia, in your schools, is that you have children with English as a second language. And so applying what I've just shown you to your eight year olds is a nonsense because they don't have the language ability. So there are two things that I would recommend that you do. Um, and it may be that um, Mentari will uh, need to discuss this further, but basically Star Early Literacy is available and it is a very simple platform where children log in and it's pictures and sound, so they need headphones. And it very quickly adapts, but what I would do is I would doctor change the date of birth for the children. So your eight-year-olds, I'd change the year so that they're acting as five-year-olds. So when they log in, the system thinks they're a five-year-old and then you'll get a very strong benchmark. It's not ideal, but you, will, you can do that or you can adapt it as the children are going on, if that, if that makes sense. Um, and what you're then doing is getting a true level of understanding. Now, the challenge is, and often it's parents who challenge that, and they say, oh, this book is much too easy for my children. They're eight and nine, and you're giving them baby books. Yes, but they need to understand. Reading is not about just sounding out d o g dog. It's understanding that when the sentence says the dog was very kind, what does that mean? Oh, it doesn't bite people. That's comprehension. 
but a child sounding out all of the words in the dog was very kind. They don't understand what that means. They might be reading the words, but that's very different from comprehension. I don't know if that's too wordy or too long understand um, explanation, but that's the best I can manage. You're on mute. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ms. Barrett. Um, yeah, because um, first time when you did the material, it was very, it is very interesting. This book is very interesting, especially there are many book choices. That That's only one question something on my mind. Okay. But thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, Ms. Margaret, uh, thank yes. you. Uh, but I think uh, you can continue your uh, presentation. Presentation. First. Yeah. Okay. So, what I'm going to do um, before I finish my slides is just take you to the Focus Skills website. Um, and um, so, let's just do that. And this is the US version. So, it's renaissance.com forward slash focus skills dot skills um, where you can get everything around standards based focus skills. I know the UK one um, uh, more. So I, the reason I'm going to show you this one. So I think you should go to the .co.uk version as well, because not only do you get all this information, you can download the workbooks, but there is also a webinar that is hosted by Dr. Jean Kearns, who is our chief academic officer. Um, and it explains focus skills in a lot more detail and you can just click on it and watch it. So if you want more information about the focus skills, this is available as a, as a, a, a free recording and you will get more information about the focus skills. So that's why I wanted to show you this version. I'm sure that somewhere on the um, US version, there's probably something similar but it, they don't put it on the um, on the front page. Oh, look, here it is. Watch the webinar, so you can watch um, a similar webinar that he did for for the US as well. So that's why I was just showing you those um, uh, URLs as a as a, a closing aspect to the um, focus skills. I hope I hope that's helpful. Um, and then finally. Um, just to go back to my presentation, which is now in the wrong place because um, of Mr. Reno, but I will uh, just uh, get back to that. That's fine. It's good that he was asking the question that he was asking because I'm sure it helped a lot of people um, answer the... For some reason, my computer just likes to stop sharing at any moment. Um, so let's just go back down to here. So that was the last. Um... Slide. Um, something that we have recently started, well, we started it about um, two years ago. So the timing wasn't great. Uh, because guess what? We had a pandemic. Did you know about the pandemic in Indonesia? <laughs> it has completely changed everybody's lives, hasn't it? All the things we planned, all the things we were going to do in the last 18 months. Um, so we have got this partner school program. So if you are already um, a member, a, a, a customer of Renaissance, a customer of Miranda, um, and you are using our products, please think about joining our partner school program. There is the um, URL at the top. It is a .co.uk version. And the idea is we would love to have schools who are using our products so that we can um, talk to them. We can find out more about how they're using the products and the experience they're having with them. And we have now um, over 150 schools um, that have joined this, this, this programme. And primary schools, secondary schools, all through schools, international schools, um, uh, global schools, and we are really keen. So if you are already a customer of Renaissance, please get in touch. If you go to that website, there is a form to fill in. You just fill it in and we will be in touch. And you get a certificate and you're welcomed into the programme. And the idea is that we start to build up 
a community of partner schools or schools that are using our products. There is no charge for it. It is something that we encourage you to be part of. It's not quite worked in the way that we had hoped because we thought we would have events and, you know, all of the things that we all planned two years ago that somebody decided we wouldn't do anymore. Um, I think we all know what I'm talking about. Um, social media, um, you either love it or hate it, but it does have a part to play and has had a significant part to play during this pandemic where you are able to connect with other educators from Renaissance. I'm showing you the international um, Twitter handle, but we have various Facebook pages. And if you search for us, you'll find us. There's also um, Pinterest. If you have heard of Pinterest, there are lots of people that post up ideas on Pinterest about Accelerated Reader and Myon and information. So, you know, there's lots of things online. I'm sure you know a lot about um, social media, but I just wanted to emphasize that we are there and available. And finally, I know that Miranda will also uh, give you um, information about where you can um, get in touch with Mentari and, and all of the information that uh, you need. But here are some also uh, some uh, addresses and links that you might like to use. Um, and I think really all it remains for me to say is thank you, Miranda, for your support throughout this presentation. And thank you to Mentari for setting up the opportunity. Um, thank you to you all for attending. I hope you found it helpful. I've tried to speak slowly, but I know I can get a bit passionate about things and go a bit fast. So I'm sorry if I speed it up at times. Um, if there's any other questions you'd like to ask, anything you'd like to, to say, please, um, let us know and we can unmute you and, and allow you to have your say. Otherwise, it just remains for me to say, I hope you have a very good rest of the afternoon and evening. Okay, yeah, so thank you so much, Ms. Margaret. It was, it was really wonderful, but I think uh, we still have time before the final Q&A. So um, can you show us the feature uh, in, the, in my own so we can see uh, my own more clearly. So, so go back to the my own um, environment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because I think uh, we want to uh, see more uh, the features that in uh, that on my own. Just a second, please. Yep, take your time, Miss Margaret. Okay, so um would you like me to just uh look at some different books or So um, it will be great if we can see uh, the book. The, the book I showed or a different book? Uh, it's OK. Uh, it, it, it can be a different book or uh, yeah, that. OK, is. so um, I really like this series of books there. It's a series called What If? Um, and I often show this book as well. Um, and the reason I like it is because, again, it's very um simple layout i'm just going to actually what i could do is show the um the narration shall i do that that might be helpful for people let me just um i just have to click a button on zoom before i do that so just bear with me a second so um What if there were no bees? A book about the grassland ecosystem. Don't be fooled by a bee's size. It's tiny. Can you hear that? Yes, perfect. Yes. So um, obviously with, with um, the book, you can see that as it's speaking, sorry, as it's, yeah, as it's speaking, as it's reading, if you like, 
each of the words are being identified. Um, and you can actually change that so that um, uh, it, it shows the whole, you know, highlight sentences. You can um, show the annotations or not show the annotations, highlight words. So I'm going to take the highlight words off. Um, and if I just start it again. Compared to the foxes, skunks, and owls that share its grassland home. But bees do the work of giants. Bees spend countless hours darting from flower to flower to collect pollen and nectar. So I'm changing Grassland the plants, animals, and insects are tied to one another by food chains. Bees, as well as other living things, belong to several chains. Many food chains. So you can see, you know, there are ways in which that can be adapted for the students. As a teacher, you probably, I would hope you would try and read the book with the children, because I think even if your English isn't very good, you attempting to read it with them is a great way of engaging them. They will be much more interested if you are reading those words to them rather than just having the narration on. Uh, um, obviously, the um, uh, pronunciation is stronger through my own, but I would still um, recommend that your reading and engagement with it. And to the question that was asked about um, textbooks and um, digital environment, you know, if this was a textbook that you had in your classroom, yes, it would be a lovely book to share, but it's very hard to share that book when you've got 30 children all sitting in the classroom. Now, that doesn't mean that you never, ever show books or read from paper books. I think that would be wrong. And I don't think Renaissance would be suggesting that for one minute. But what you've got here is a digital platform which will experience, give the children the experience of the book where they can all see and understand what's going on. And, you know, obviously this book is all about food chains. Um, and so being able to then use the tools um, in the way that, you know, they're being used here. So I can, I can create my own food chain um, because the, the snake may eat the bird and then the fox will eat the bird. So I'm, I'm bypassing um, the, the, the illustration here because I'm demonstrating for children what the food chain is. But something else I might do on this page is I can put a post-it note on here and I can put, um, uh, I'm guessing this, but I think there's a food chain um, uh, link at the BBC website. So as a teacher, I've prepared this lesson, but I want to go live to the BBC to show them the food chain bit. So that's just a little bit of a reminder for me. So I'm just gonna put that up there. And actually what I might do just to remind me is I'm going to show that it's a link. So now I know on that page, when I'm talking to the children about the food chains, I mustn't forget to go to the, um, the website that I've um, put up here. That's the sort of thing that I mean about in enhancing the experience for the children. Preparation for you as the teacher. You now, you've, you've done your research. When I show the elephant book to um, educators, I often put a YouTube video link there because there's a really strong, short, um, video of a family of elephants saving a baby that falls into a lake and the empathy and the the teamwork and the way that the elephants all work together is so strong that to show that as part of the reading of the book that's teaching and learning that's using books as a platform using a digital library as a platform it's not replacing books. It's not replacing your teaching and your curriculum and anything else that you want to share with your children. But you're being given an opportunity to embellish, enhance that experience, enhance the teaching and learning. I can see someone's um, put their hand up. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you so much, Miss Margaret, for showing us the features in my book. I think this is for students. 
Uh, is that right, Miss Margaret? The one that you show, the features. What I'm showing. What I'm showing. Yeah. So okay. yes, the, the, they are. These books are for students. But what I'm demonstrating really is how teachers can use the books to teach, and yeah. not just the students using the books to learn to read. It's it's. I, I want to emphasize that this is a two way opportunity. It's not just often what happens, people see Myon as a digital platform or a dig, sorry, a digital library and not a digital platform. So they say, oh, there's all these books that children can access. And that is fantastic. Absolutely. It, it's wonderful for that. Children have books at home, they can share. But there's also the teaching aspect of Myon, which often gets overlooked. The, the adult interacting with the interface to pull out the strong elements that make reading such a powerful subject, such a powerful um, platform. Okay, right, wonderful. Thank you so much for your explanation, Ms. Margaret. Yeah, I think there's someone raised hand before. Yes, I saw that yeah. too. Is that Miss Natalie Natalia? Do you want to ask something? Am I correct? Is it Miss Natalia Natalia? Yep. Okay. So yeah, I think we come into the final QA session with Miss Progress. So if you have any question, you can type it on the chat box or yeah, use the raise hand feature. Is there any question? Yeah, Mr. Wahidudin, please. Hi. Hello, Miss Margaret. Good, uh, Hello. good morning. Good morning. Well done. Very good. <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> So my question will be like how to utilize my on and to not uh, uh, not put a lot of work uh, on the students part, especially if I'm teaching like older students. Usually they will say, oh, there's too much work for us. Like we have to read on my own. We have like another textbook. How do we like use my own and not to burn out our students or not to make them feel that they're being burned out by all of these tools that we're using in school? So. I, I don't think the children will use some of the tools so much as um, teachers will. But I think sometimes you're right, you know, I do think that we have a generation of children who have become um, not lazy, but they, ha they lack stamina. Um, and I think they lack stamina because everything is so instant, everything is available so quickly. And so they don't want to read more than two words before they want to click on a video. And, you know, it's, it's challenging for teachers to engage children and students who have had a diet where everything is now, 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 quick, quick, quick. Um, so I think you have to be clever, you have to be sneaky, um, and maybe it's um, because the Myon platform is so engaging, maybe it's doing things, suggesting things like sharing the book with a, a child at home, or sharing the book with a, a cousin or a brother or a sister, because if you, again, if you model for children how you as the teacher are helping um, them to appreciate the value of books and the knowledge and the non-fiction and the fiction for you for a child for a student to do that with a younger child or a younger sibling a brother or a sister they could choose a different book and as we all know it's not until we do something that we understand how complex it is and so if they then were to share an easier book with a brother or a sister then they would get involved in it because the children, the younger brother or sister will be saying, oh, what's this? What's that? How does this work? How does that work? I think we have to offer environments that appeal to children. And I think they like to use a screen. Um, they prefer to use a screen, if we're honest. Uh, so we need to encourage them to log on at home. And maybe if they're sharing it with someone else, 
they will enjoy it. But I also think if the book is being read to them, so is being narrated to them, they can read books that are slightly harder because some of the effort of reading the words has been taken away because it's being narrated. So I think that's something else that you can say, um, you know, uh, a book that you wouldn't normally be able to read on your own in a paper version, if it's being narrated to you, um, then uh, it might be, a, it's an easier task. And Mayon's quite clever because what it also does, let me show you this. This is my last thing I'm going to show you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, search. So let's search for um, Africa. So I'm going to choose uh, a very simple book just because I want to go through really quickly. Anyway, let's go for Lions are Awesome. So I'm going to choose this book. I'm going to turn the um, sound off. And I'm just going to skip through the book really quickly. I'm not really reading it at all. I'm just skipping through. And it says, uh, no, read more to finish this book. You can't just skip through and then you finish the book. Mayan doesn't allow that because it knows that the book takes longer than 14 seconds to read. So, you know, little things like that help. You know, if you say to some children, you've got to read these books, they can't just skip through. They have to actually engage with the book. So I think there are ways of, of supporting children. I think it is challenging. I think learning English is hard, um, especially if they don't have English spoken at home. But I think it's small steps. And the mere fact that you're attending this webinar today, I think shows your willingness to explore new avenues and different strategies. So um, if there's, I don't know if there are any more questions. Yep, someone sent a question to me. Um... The question is, what kind of reading activities that uh, we can apply in elementary school in order to make my students excited during reading class? Yeah, I think I think it's the whole class approach. I think if you have a whole group of children, a whole class of children, 30 children, um, keeping them all engaged might be challenging. But if you're reading a book together and you then stop and maybe say, Share with a partner something you've just learned from what we've just read. You've got a minute to talk to somebody about. In your, you can speak in, in your own language. You don't have to use English. But from the English that I've just read to you, I've just shared with you, what have you learned? Learn one fact. And then, right, everybody, the minute's up. Anybody like to share what they've just spoken about with their partner? You know, you have to find different ways of talking to children. If you um, Google whole class reading it's a very hot topic in the UK um, teachers and classrooms up and down the country are using whole class reading as a way of um, ensuring that children are engaging with reading material in a purposeful way because the more able children will be able to articulate um, or be able to explain uh, reading to the less able so children who put their hand up and say, I don't really understand. If another child explains it, often they do understand it because they use language that they understand. I have actually, I, I will send a link to a video, um, Miranda, that I demonstrate where I'm talking to children in a whole class reading. It's not using my own, but it is using um, a quiz. And it is using a whole class environment and it will give people an insight into what whole class reading is like. Okay. Right, uh, we have 
we still have another question, Miss Margaret. And I think you want to send a link before. Um, I'll I'll send it to you, and then you can um, uh, forward it on to um, to your participants because I don't know where it is on our system. I wasn't expecting. Uh, to share that so there is a link but I, I'll send it on to you separately and then maybe you can share it with the participants at some point. All right okay note uh, Miss Margaret uh, and then we have another question here uh, how teacher can monitor student progress in my own so that's using star so you you take the test at the beginning of, of a term and the, choose, the children use Myon, and then you take the test at the end of the term and you see whether they have developed uh, their ling language comprehension. Oh, okay. Can you, maybe you, you can show us uh, how to uh, monitor the student progress. Maybe you can uh, show us the dashboard, the teacher's dashboard. In Myon? The only thing is, I don't know what the data, I, I'm always nervous on a demo site of doing that because the data is often not very good. Um, you know, the data isn't real data, so it doesn't show um, very good uh, information. Um, let me think. Um, If I've got anything I can show you which will help. Uh, I'll find a screenshot of, of um, something that might be helpful for people. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we want to see how we can track students' progress in teachers' uh, dashboard. Yeah, I, I, I can, I can show you. But the, um, my, my challenge is that the um, what I'm logging into is a demo site. But I'm very happy to show you. Let me, let me just show you the reports. Um, So these are the reports that are available in the background. Um, and uh, so uh, this is the problem because the, the information, I don't know if there'll be a, oh, well, there we go. So on this particular example, you can see that seven students have read 166 books, um, over a thousand pages. They've read for 542 minutes and the average um, lexile is uh, 640. But then you can actually see individual children and in what they have done. So you can see how this information has been um, put together by these individual children. And then you can download the report. Um, there are um, projects. Um, so uh, if you go onto the cloud um, and um, search, hmm. so uh, teachers can upload projects to the cloud and then they can be shared, but I am not sure what the environment is for this, this particular um, Myon site. But we can see that someone has um, put together a project here. Uh, so you could put a list of books together and that could be a project that, that teachers could use. So you could add books to, um, to the project. Um, looking at students, seeing how they're doing, um, when they last logged in, Um, quizzes. 
So we can see that 30 quizzes have been taken, what the average score was. Here are the children that have taken the quizzes. Um, most popular books. That's always a dangerous one to do. There we go. So we can see that these are particularly popular. They've worked very well. Simple books. Um, and the information around it. Does that help? Yes, it was really helpful, Miss Margaret. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah, we have, yeah, I think we have a lot last question here. So this is, I think this is a good question. Can you please explain once again what makes my own very different from the other digital reading programs? Miss Margaret. Um so I think I think I'll probably go to the library to 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 do that. Um, and if I go to search, all digital platforms have a library with a search facility. So that's nothing um, specific. And you could choose a book like I did, bees or elephants or Africa or teeth. Let's just choose that as a topic. So here are the books that I've chosen under teeth. But the difference is that it has all of that functionality, which is much more than just reading the book. So let's just choose this really simple book here. Um, I think the illustrations are superb. They're not just photocopies. They're not, you know, they're not PDFs. They're actually very real. But for me as a teacher, what makes the difference is the way in which I can engage in this space because I've got these additional tools and I've got the narration and I've got the ability to enhance the experience, the reading journal. You know, um, let's get rid of this. And so um, we're dealing with young children and we're doing a topic on myself. And this particular um, topic, we're going to gather up some information about teeth. So I'm gathering all of that information. So there are 20 baby teeth in my mouth and my baby teeth will fall out as I grow. So I'm going to just take that off and that off. By doing that, I've taken note taking with young children to a completely different level. I haven't just photocopied something. I haven't just copied and pasted. I've got this journal. So now I'm going to um, close this book, go back to another search of teeth. I'm going to choose a different book, start the book, and some other facts I've been asked to gather. So she eats good snacks and they keep her teeth and gums healthy and strong. I like that fact. I've still got my notes from the other book. So what I want to do is now take this information from a different book. And I'm just going to take out some of the information. So it's not, I'm just, uh, what, I'm, what I'm doing here is demonstrating what I would do with children when I'm sharing this approach. I've now got two facts from two different books. That's not just a digital library. What that's doing is engaging within the whole infrastructure of digital resources understanding that children need as adults when they start to sit exams in secondary school they'll need to be able to take notes comfortably this allows you to demonstrate this skill allows you to enhance the reading experience and i think having that in conjunction with the reporting makes my on a much more um compact and uh, well put together program
All right. Thank you so much, Miss Margaret. I think my own is uh, quite fun app to read and also to make a journal. It's really, really great. And I will be very happy if I am the students. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much, Miss Margaret, for the You're welcome. and ideas you did share to us. I'm sure that our teachers will take away some ideas to build the students' writing and reading skills in such a meaningful and personal, personalized way. Ya, uh, Bapak Ibu yang kami hormati, kami berharap uh, sesi siang hari ini dapat memberikan insight dan juga strategi baru bagi Bapak dan Ibu guru untuk mendukung anak didik agar memiliki minat dan literasi membaca dan menulis dengan lebih baik. Sebagaimana yang telah dipaparkan oleh pembicara kita siang hari ini dengan beragam fitur dan kecanggihan teknologi, program My Own merupakan program fully digital yang kami harapkan bisa menjadi salah satu solusi untuk mendorong minat baca anak dan remaja, serta meningkatkan kemampuan literasi membaca mereka dengan menarik, interaktif, dan pastinya menyenangkan. Sehingga kegiatan reading tidak lagi menjadi hal yang menakutkan dan membosankan bagi para siswa. Harapan, harapan akhirnya tentu saja kompetensi siswa kita dalam bahasa Inggris bisa meningkat selama menjalani pembelajaran jarak jauh. So well, due to the limited time, I have to end the 